assuming that the world continues to develop and that China and India and Brazil become rich countries over the next half century or century, how much energy is the world going to use? When you start running those numbers, it's a sobering exercise. And you may not be able to get that number exactly right, but you realize we're going to basically double the amount of energy we consume by 2050. We're probably going to triple it or quadruple it by the end of the century. And meanwhile, if you want to stabilize emissions at some reasonable level, almost all of that energy has to be clean energy. You know, you've got to not only you know, create a clean energy infrastructure to replace the fossil fuel infrastructure we have, but we have to create yet another one, or maybe two of them, between now and 2050 or 2100 in order to reduce our emissions to stabilize the climate. And that is just nothing that anybody has really been talking about or dealing with over the last 20 years. It comes as a shock to a lot of environmentalists to hear this, but coal is not only the most widely used source of energy in the world, it's also the fastest growing source of energy. Its use is accelerating worldwide, faster than natural gas, faster than renewables, faster than anything else. When I've spoken to women's groups, none of them knew how bad coal was. They didn't know it killed people. If you add up all fossil fuel combustion in the United States, just from power plants, the fine particulates alone kill 13,000 people a year. Worldwide, three million people die a year from air pollution from fossil fuel plants. One of the big surprises for me when I started looking into the mortality data, the death rates associated with each energy technology per amount of energy they make, is that nuclear is the second safest after wind. And in fact, to add to the irony of it, nuclear power is even safer than solar panels. <laughs> Making solar panels is an incredibly toxic process. But I mean, I thought that people died at Three Mile Island. I thought that hundreds of thousands of people died at Chernobyl. I thought that there was nuclear waste scattered all around the country and that it was seeping into our water systems. I believed all that stuff. And I, and I, I thought even if maybe it was getting a little bit better or maybe if, it were, if the problems of it were exaggerated a little bit by my fellow environmentalists, that it was still uh, a risk that we didn't need to take. There hasn't been a single death from the operation of commercial nuclear reactors in the United States. Not one death in the history of nuclear power in this country. At Vermont Yankee, which anti-nuclear people are trying to shut down, protesters keep saying it's causing public health problems. It's not. But it's leaking tritium. It's leaking tritium, that's true. Banana breaks? Oh, I love one. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. If you ate one banana, banana breaks? which have a potassium isotope that's a little hot, you would get more radiation exposure than you would if you drank all the water that comes out of the plant in one day. Banana break! Tritium is a naturally occurring hydrogen isotope. We're going to ask that all those people who are willing to risk arrest remain in this safety zone until the rest of the people have moved. In New Mexico, where I grew up, there's radium springs. And um, I had a friend who went with his Geiger counter and the, the hippies were there soaking in the baths, and he got out his Geiger counter and said, you know, this is radioactive. 
And they said, yeah, man, but it's natural. It's true to say that we're all bathed in natural radioactivity. It's affecting all of us all the time. It comes from the rocks and the air and even from space. It's in our food, in our water, in our teeth. So radiation isn't dangerous in an everyday sense. And there's enormous variation in different parts of the world. Do you have any numbers? just to put that in a kind of a context? Well, the numbers, I mean, the units are difficult. It's greys and millirems and all this kind of thing. Right. Um, um, you know, so the numbers are not familiar to people in any way, shape or form. If I say to you, the radioactivity, oh, it's only another four microsieverts. Are you going to feel better about that? Of course you're not, because you don't know what on earth I'm talking about. Iodine 131. The reporting of radiation levels are as confusing as they could possibly be. It has just about zero point seven rem, uh, you have to get up to 50 to 75 rem to get... We hear about rems and millirem and micro rems, and then, uh, oh no, there's sieverts. We hear a lot about sieverts, micro sieverts, millisieverts, and you're, you're looking and squinting and, okay, that looks like a large number. Is, is that a number I should worry about? And compared to what? What's the background radiation level relative to all this? I didn't even know there was such a thing as natural background radiation, actually. Uh, I'd assumed that radiation was something which humans had artificially introduced into the environment, which was doing us harm. There's background radioactivity affecting all of us all the time, which is many, many times more powerful than, than artificial radioactivity in terms of how we're affected. So zero tolerance of radiation doesn't make any sense. Radiation increases with altitude. Uh, so people who live at high altitude get a higher dose than people who live in low-lying areas. And if you're traveling on an airplane, say if you're going from New York to Tokyo, you'll get 20 times the average background level during that flight. For example, in Barapari Beach in Brazil, the natural background radiation there is way above permitted levels in terms of what the public can be exposed to. And that's what's coming out of the soil that's on the beach. Can you ask him why he does this? Why are you doing this for some reason? It's for the pain in the body. It has body pain, you know? And this helps? It helps. It helps. It helps. And what's really striking is that there's no correlation between levels of background radioactivity, which vary by such enormous amounts, and higher levels of cancer. Cancer is something which is, is the greatest fear of most people in rich countries, um, because it, it kills 20% of people anyway. We all know people who've died of cancer, and so this idea that radioactivity is a cause of cancer is probably the number one reason why people are scared of it.